What's up everyone and welcome to Movie Important's movie review of the newest Amazon original movie, The Bass of Night. This movie is of course directed by Andrew Patterson, it's his first movie he ever directed. And before we begin, please hit the subscribe button to join Movie Important, hit that notification bell at the top to find what's coming next, and uh, comment below on any videos you watch, including this one. So The Vast of Night was a film that premiered at Slamdance in 2019, uh, so it's been around the film circuits for quite a while. It's a film that gained a lot of traction, and uh, was picked up by Amazon to either release VOD or theatrically, I can't find an actual article about it. And uh, because of COVID-19, the current pandemic, uh, it was actually released in drive-in theaters, it actually did pretty well and uh, now it's on Amazon Prime to watch for everyone and it's a film that is trying desperately to be a Twilight Zone slash 1950s alien invasion slash paranoid thriller type movie and uh, for the most part it's fun it's entertaining the 50s aesthetic really does a nice job Andrew Patterson has a, a really nice eye for what we like to see and kind of throwback thrillers and kind of movies of that ilk with the you know the look and the feel with the cars the clothing the aesthetics of the sound stuff and you know the the pieces and so on and so forth like the switchboards and the radio station and how small everything was and how you know how intricate and it's really nicely done but the story is very convoluted it kind of has a huge amount of problems with trying to pace itself trying to push itself forward and that does become a problem throughout the movie but we have sierra mccormick and jake herwitz who are playing faye and everett and they're literally the only two cast members that really have any significant importance into this movie it's a very toned down type of thriller and basically faye is a switchboard operator they're both in high school by the way everett is a radio dj jockey and in the process of doing their jobs they uh faye discovers this humming noise or the static whatever and she starts to get suspicious about what's going on she's trying to call different people trying to figure out what the problem is she finally you know hears it on the radio station as well so she kind of starts talking with everett and they kind of go into like a detective mode a uncovering of a possible conspiracy of a possible alien cover-up and because this takes place in 1950s new mexico roswell is very important to i think the setup of the story even though it's not really explained and so they go about their night trying to figure out what the problem is you know whether it be leaving their jobs going to interview people talking to someone on the radio it's a, a very interesting setup it has some really interesting ideas like i said it's definitely trying to be like twilight zone but the problem i have honestly with this movie is like i said the story itself there's a lot of times where there's not really anything going on when you have a movie like this you have to be snappy 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 you have to give us plot points and ideas and logic you know this movie is probably 20 minutes too long it probably could have been an hour long and been just fine because there are points where ever and Faye are just talking which is fine you know they're coming from a basketball game which was you know kind of puts the whole idea of being in a friday night you know when you took your you know date to a movie and stuff like that at a movie drive-in theater but they're just talking about whatever there's like 20 minutes where they're just like nothing really happens so they get to actual plot point which is why i think this movie could have been cut down by 20 minutes there's some uh really tense moments you know that you can feel tension building and then it kind of drops for a little bit and then it kind of comes back and it drops and it comes back and blah 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 I just, I didn't feel like the movie was really committed to its story and its ideas. I think it was too focused on trying to create tension and trying to create mood, trying to create the aesthetic of the 50s and so on and so forth. But I do think, you know, uh, Jake Horowitz and Sierra McCormick do a really nice job and really have great chemistry together, which makes the movie a little better, a little more enjoyable and digestible than what it could be. Uh, but yeah, the story just kind of completely falls flat and then it has an ending which you kind of see coming, has some uh, diversions and kind of plot twists you kind of see coming. And it just feels like a movie that, for better or worse, is just not really that great of a movie, to be honest. You know, when I say it's trying to be like Twilight Zone, this movie sets up a thing called Paradox Theater, which is basically the Twilight Zone in this world. And I think that's fun. I think that's interesting. But they try to use that effect throughout the movie with the way it's shot. You know, there are some moments where 
it goes to like a TV static thing with, you know, you're watching them through this TV static situation. And it's kind of made me start wondering about an idea that I had that maybe these aliens were watching these people do these things, that this is what their vision of what they were looking at, but it's never really fully explained. So I, I, I really can't go on that idea and plot pro, point or whatever, but that's the main problem with this movie is like, it doesn't really justify anything or it doesn't really set up anything that works really well. But like I said, you know, that's why I think it also fails is because, you know, Rod Sterling with the Twilight Zone in a half hour, 25, 30 minutes, he was able to construct a finite beginning, a finite middle, a finite end. He was able to get his ideas and his points across that this movie is trying to do itself, but this movie misses the whole point of that issue. And that's why it doesn't work on that whole on the Twilight Zone. But it also feels like similar to like a creep show, you know, in the essence of something that's very pulpy, very fun and energetic in a lot of ways. So you, you have to forgive it in that respect. But if you're going in for a deep kind of 1950s day, the Earth is still, you're not going to get that here. You're going to get two people like investigating some situation and coming to a conclusion that doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. But I do think Andrew Patterson has a very good career ahead of him. I think this is a very good starting point. The movie's still entertaining enough. You know, you look at something like Lights Out with David F. Sandberg and to the eventual, you know, Shazam and stuff like that. I think he has a great career that he could build upon and get better with the storytelling and his movie making magic and i think he could be a, a, a great director later on in his career whether that happens or not is a different story but i think this is a good starting point so there you go at least that's something positive out of this movie so that's it that's my take on the vast of night thank you so much for watching uh hit the comments below and tell me what you think of this movie did you like it did you not like it also hit the subscribe button to join movie and pour him notification about the top of the finals coming next as well as uh liking and disliking this video or any other video on this channel but otherwise see you on the next video peace out What's up guys? Thank you so much for checking out Movie Emporium. I really appreciate it. If you want to, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button and the bell at the top. Find out what's coming next for Movie Emporium. Also, check out these two videos. They're amazing. I think they're awesome. I think you'll enjoy them too. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time.